All right, everyone. Welcome back to DSP versus the Internet for uh, Saturday, March 18th, 2023. I believe this is episode five. We're heading into part two right now. Let's see what our next video is. Let's jump right into it. <clears throat> Rantle Floss, the Xbox. So I was playing an Xbox game recently with a friend of mine, and the screen said, press X. I kind of froze, and my friend, who has only ever had an Xbox, said, dude, press X, come on. Douchebag has only ever had an Xbox. He does not understand. Let's take it back to Christmas 1991. Nintendo all these the controls. Super Nintendo to the North American market and introduces a four-button diamond on the right side of the controller with the letters A, B, Y, and X yep. with X, X was at the top. The top. Correct. It was more intuitive than Sega's Larry Curly and Moe bullshit and had twice as many right side buttons as the TurboGrafx-16. Clearly, they were on to something. And then, four years later, Sony threw their hat into the video game console market with an unsightly Galaxy-class starship called the PlayStation. The right side of the PlayStation controller had a four-button diamond just like the Super Nintendo controller. Fortunately, Sony had the smart idea that instead of being labeled with letters, these buttons should be labeled with shapes. <laughs> one of the shapes was also one of the letters used by Nintendo. But that was okay, right? As long as they were on the same button, no one would get confused. Sony did put the X button in the same position as the Super Nintendo, right? Nope. Wrong! Oh, but wait. Four years later, Sega flipped a coin, and rather than landing on the good idea side, they released a new console called the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast controller, lo and behold, had a four-button diamond on the right side and denoted them with the letters A, B, Y, and yeah, X. Yeah, this, this same argument could also be made for the A, B button, the Y button. Like, if you take a look, that's the Dreamcast controller, all right? And that lines up exactly with the button layout of the Xbox controller. They're exactly the same buttons. So that one's identical. There are other, like for example, ABBA is different. Um, ABBA is different on different, like Nintendo to, to Sega to others as well. So it's, I understand what you're saying with X, but also the other buttons are the same In the problem. same place as the PlayStation <clears throat> either. I'm not done. Then, in 2001, as if possessed by the dying soul of the Dreamcast, Microsoft released the Xbox with the Dreamcast same Nintendo defying right. layout. The same buttons. I mean, at least they were the same as something that came before them, but a year later, the Dreamcast was discontinued. Irony. Oh, but wait. The same year, Nintendo released a new console called the GameCube and decided it would be fun to fuck with us some more and created the controller with the Y here and the X. Yeah, but I mean, that's stupid because look at that. That doesn't even look like the, the button layout of a normal controller at all, right? Like, no one's going to confuse the GameCube button layout for any other controller. That's ridiculous. The buttons look like... Like, like I always said, the GameCube looked like a play school console. And I'm sorry to insult anyone who loves the GameCube. I think it was a, a fine gaming console. But you, you, it, looked, it had a handle. Like, you carried it around like your toy box with your Legos inside. You pop out the controller. Look at the buttons. It looks like it's a bunch of pieces of candy or something. Right? Like, they were really going weird with the GameCube. And, yeah, you could get used to it. But I don't know so how are you gonna confuse those. But I don't know about this. This is, this feels like one of those videos where the per, the person <clears throat> is really pushing for content, and so they wanted to do like a rant video. But I really don't feel like this video is even very valid, here. honestly. And yet, when they made the classic controller for the Wii, they put the X back here. Same deal with the Wii U gamepad. So out of context, the phrase "press X" could mean here, 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 or here. So excuse me if it takes a second. <clears throat> Sorry. It's just these video game companies really know how to push my... All right. That's a thumbs down for me. Sorry. Sorry, Brental Floss. Maybe you do funny musical remixes and stuff. Like music song, uh, like like game songs and stuff. I gotta give that one a thumbs down, man. That was not funny. That was not even, like, informative. It didn't even make sense, some of it. So that's a thumbs down for me. Sorry. Gotta be There's honest. There's a veritable pile of new ZP merch <coughs> over at the Escapist Teespring store, so check See, it out. I've never there seen. Also, if you like these videos, remember you can support us by subscribing before. to the Escapist Plus and get to watch here. without ads. I've never seen zero benefits. punctuation. Or if you prefer YouTube, join the Escape. How long is this? Because someone had said, I, was the, I believe they wanted me to fast forward, but you know what? We'll start. I've never watched zero punctuation at all. I've never seen a, a single video. Okay. Title's still not accurate because there are quite a lot of people still alive in the Mumblecore apocalypse, although in fairness, the main characters seem to be doing everything they can to rectify this oversight. Now, don't get me wrong, viewer. Playing The Last of Us 2 was a pretty miserable experience. I agree. Kinda sounded like you were gonna say but there, Yahtzee. Mm, no, it's really fucking miserable and depressing, and I would have enjoyed my weekend more had I spent it teasing out my bum hairs with pliers. Seriously, I no, I agree. Uncharted... That's, everyone's praising the, that's one of the best games ever. Like, did, but was it fun? Did you have fun playing it? Because it's horrible. It's like the a horrible plot of, of horrendous actions and terrible decisions and gore and fucked up stuff. 
Like I, I didn't enjoy the, the story at all. It wasn't fun to me. Games rubbed me up the wrong way because they were too smug and quippy and didn't give all the murdering its due seriousness. But I guess that couldn't have been it because Last of Us dialogue is mostly sad people mumbling very serious things in between five minute dramatic pauses. So this isn't even like a comedy video, he's right. Games. Is it that the enemies always pursue the protagonists far beyond the point where it makes any sense for them to do so? Probably not because that's only because they hate the protagonist so much, in which case, hey, we've got something in common, enemies. Let's ditch these losers and patrol the local bowling alley. Oh, it's a perfectly well made game. Even if it is a stealth action adventure with crafting and collectibles, which is to say the same as every finger-blasting generic AAA single-player game. <laughs> well, since I can only assume the corporate games industry finally tracked down the last creative person in it and replaced them with an algorithm, but it is pretty good stealth action. There's a skin of your teeth desperate sort of thrill to it. It's not difficult to lose the enemy if you do get spotted so the cock-ups don't cascade. The AI this is literally... I, I think I, I agree with every point he's making. I don't... You know what I'm saying? Like, I think literally every single thing he said is correct in my mind. Seriously. I, I, this is like a spot on review with zero gameplay shown. It is surprisingly dynamic. They even all have individual names, which they cry out in right. horror whenever they find a corpse. A feature that I assume exists to make the protagonists seem even more like bastards. Especially when the dudes with adorable sniffer dogs show up and after you murder That's them, right. everyone yells, No, you killed Dr. Sniffy Bum! And his dog! In the non-stealth action bits, however, gameplay is a bit of a slog. Quite a large percentage of it essentially boils down to press forward to continue, and usually the game indicates the direction in which forward lies by having someone point to the skybox and say, you see that? That's where the next plot event is. You see everything leading yeah. up to it? That's this is dead on right. fucking filler you're going to have to slog through to get there. No doubt there'll be at least one infected hangout. You'll know you're there when you get insta-killed by a zombie you weren't ready for because all the pushing forward to continue was putting you to fucking sleep. Actually, there's a token open world section early on, perhaps because of algorithms again, but the side objectives only really provide optional loot and very little in the way of extra challenge or story so it's only there if you feel like putting off the rest of the plot which you might if you hate watching horrible people take the most irrational course of action available yeah i well. 1 million percent agree with this this is this is my criticism of the game dead on is the game was not fun when you were playing in any of the plot points it was fun with some of the gameplay elements the gameplay elements were executed well i felt the world design was good and I felt that the stealth was was very, very advanced and having characters that feel like they're real or whatever was nice, but it just wasn't fun to play. It was a slog. It was very it was depressing as hell. The excessive gore and terrible overtones of the story, the bad pacing of the story. This was everything I said in my review. Now this guy, the escapist, zero punctuation. I know this is a video series of his, right? 1.2 million views. I wonder, did anyone hate on him for this? I'm just curious. I wonder if you guys know the answer to this. Because if you remember, when The Last of Us 2 was out, it was like this ginormous group of people, the, the, the Last of Us Defense Force, correct? So I'm very curious, you know, what happened? Did this guy get tons of negative attention and backlash because he's criticizing the game so strongly in this video? Because I said exactly the same stuff, but it was like I'm the devil for doing it, for being honest about it, right? Mobster Lobster says, the guy's main shtick is speaking without pauses and hating on games. He reviewed like one positively ever. Making negative reviews is his shtick. So he only... Oh, so now here's a question because I'm trying to understand this in perspective. Does he only review games he doesn't like or is the shtick that he always says games are bad? What's the shtick there? Be honest, I don't think I want to watch it anymore because I already know everything he's going to say. Like, I already agree with it. Derek says, the escapist is a website. Oh, so th this is actually a website's... YouTube page and they uplo up the uploaded this video to their page. This isn't his page. Okay. Got it. He reviews any games but he does review the bad side of them. He focuses on what he doesn't like. Portal was the only one he liked for a long time. Okay. I think it, I think it's perfectly passable. It's it's I'm going to give this a mid. I don't hate it at all, but I'm not in love with it. I'll give this a mid rating. What do you guys think for this video? I think it's a mid. It's it's definitely watchable. It's watchable than a lot of the other stuff we see, <laughs> right? Okay. Thumbs down. Very nice. No one's rating you right now. All right. You guys vote. Vote what you think. We'll go on to the next. Okay. What the fuck? Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. No, don't get closer to the camera. Back away from the camera. Oh my god. Take a look. It's in a book. 
A reading rainbow. A reading rainbow. A reading rainbow. A reading rainbow. A reading I don't know what the hell that had to do with reading Rainbow. I just got back from Seoul, and while I was there, I decided to try to learn to read the Korean alphabet, and I was amazed by how easy it was. Really? After just a couple hours, I actually got to a point where I could read just about everything on this Wikipedia page. What? Uh, and I'm going to teach you how to do it in about five minutes. What? So let's start with consonants and vowels. Um, there are two consonants I'll teach and two vowels. This here looks like a bucket, so remember the B sound. This one looks like a nose, so remember the N sound. So those are two consonants. This is the tree. Now for the tree, we remember E. Here you have a line after the tree. So we take the A from after, and that's A. Ah. All right, so we already have enough to learn a word in Korean. We have bucket, and then A ah for after. Nose, and then A ah for after. Ba, na, and then another na, so ba, na, na. Let's do a quick Google search on banana, uh, as I did here, and sure enough, you have bananas. So, banana is banana in Korean. It's your first word. Here oh, is a gun. I don't know. Right? Like, gun can like, I understand his reasoning of how to do it, but that's like code deciphering. You know what I mean? Like, that is, that's, like, the way he's doing it, he's saying, oh, this looks like a bucket, so remember B. <laughs> oh, this looks like a nose, so that's an N. But then if you combine that with this, like this is actually, so nose plus tree would be knee knee. So right off the bat, it's that's wrong. Oh no, I guess what he's saying is nose crossed through the tree, so it'd be ah, so it's na na. Ba, ba na na. Ba na na. Okay, it's, it's gonna take some work. Like there's absolutely no way you could do this in five minutes. He's completely full of crap. His video is five minutes because he's going so fast. Now that I paused it and I started to look at it again, I'm like, okay, if that if you always know that bucket symbol is B, the B sound, the line is like is a tree, but if you have the line after, that's an A, right? And then the no, the nose is an N, so ba, na, na. Yeah, that makes sense. What else does he say? Also Let's look see. like this, as in <laughs> ga here. Either way, it's the G sound. Here we have a mouth, the M sound. This is the nothing. All right, so when nothing is at the beginning the of a character, it's silent. You hear nothing. It's silent at the beginning. When it's at the end of a character, it's the NG sound. So either silent or NG. This is what? a schema. Oh, this is so yes. easy to learn. Let's do another vowel. Now our line is before. So we're going to take the O as in before for when uh, the line uh, Learn this in five minutes. No. No. You cannot learn this in five minutes. This is. This would take a lot of memorization and a lot of application and repetition to have it stick in your brain like this is completely wrong. like maybe again it's a nice abridged video keep watching this video over and over and you'll absorb this in the into your conscious you know your thinking but there's no way you can learn this in five minutes that's not Let's happening do another word we have s's in ski mountain ah as in after and m as in mouth sam and here we have s's in ski mountain all is in before and that uh, nothing is an ng at the end so that's song so sam samsung song. let's go back to google yeah we'll samsung samsung uh sure enough we have samsung which is uh, the largest company in korea a few more this is a ski atop the mountain which is joy so the j sound okay and here is uh, a skier with his hands raised that's the champion so this is like a body so it goes s j c h this is a rattlesnake. That's a rattlesnake? Which is generally speaking an R for rattlesnake. Of course snake, it is. It's the end of a character, it's often L. Another vowel, this is a brook. Looks like a river, we'll call it brook. That's the uh sound from brook. <laughs> there's no, so there's no uh in brook. Uh, brook. It's not even the same sound. Yes. All right, we have gun, he, we have the- Gun? That's not the gun symbol. The gun symbol is supposed to be straight down. It's not even the same symbol. E for tree, and we have M, so that's gim. Here we have this ski atop the mountain, so that's the joy, that's J. Again, ski atop the mountain, joy, J. No, that's not the same symbol. It's a different symbol. Uh, 
four, that's all, and that zero is NG at the end. So that's Kim Jong. Here we have the silence because it's at what? the beginning of a character this time. We have the U uh as in Brooke, and we have the no, so that's N, so that's Un. So Kim Jong Un. And now, if we want to get his dad, we have to. Uh, again, if you okay, we're. I think I've had enough of this one. This is basically, you know. Yes, you could probably use this video to learn basics, but this would take to learn a language uh, from someone who learns Spanish. Okay, it takes a lot of application and repetition because when you do that, um, when you do that, all right, you basically will have that muscle memory in your head. You know what I'm saying? From you did it so many times, I know that means this, this means this. But there's no way you can learn this in five minutes, nor does this make logical sense. Some of the, even the symbols, you look at joy, J, and you bring, oh, that's joy. No, it's not. That's not even the same symbol. It doesn't even have the line on top like you're saying it does. And he's making giant, logical, like these big jumps, you see? So, nah. I mean, I'll give this a mid only because like the first one did make sense. But I'm only giving it an admit, there's no way I give that a thumbs up because I completely disagree with even the name of the video. No, this I'm not going to learn Korean in five minutes, right? That's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> okay. And we have All right. The time we got here. Is this, uh... Oh! We Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2? Against the There's a game coming out, huh? The dwell in the darkness. Draw breath, we stand. Warhammer ginormous we stand, fantasy RPG franchise in tabletop fight. game, correct? <clears throat> Is it kind of weird? And I guess I'll ask the question, maybe my audience will be able to answer. <clears throat> um a lot of these like space fantasy franchises all are very similar like for example could you just say starcraft is this warhammer you got the space marines you've got the zerg correct so then what's this space marines and okay maybe they're not called zerg right but what are they then right <laughs> i don't know that's very similar to me so this looks like a third person action game right coming out a lot of the blood. angels of death we are the blade drawn against the endless night. Nothing will survive our wrath. Oh, Space Marine 2. Warhammer Space Marine 2 coming out. 2023. So it comes out this year. No date though, right? This is the sequel. The original was... Did I play the original? I think I did. Derek says the original game was September 2011. I think I remember playing it. Did I play original War Warhammer 40k Space Marine? I think I did. It sounds very familiar. Uh, Mr. Nationals, I think I submitted an Ultra Member submission earlier today. Can you check? Uh, I'm working off the playlist. We don't, you know... The only thing I can do is, like, like we get near the end. <clears throat> I can maybe try to manually play something from my phone. The problem is if I do that, then the playlist gets screwed up. So, I think what we should do... Mr. Nashville, if you can remind me near the end of the show... You know, it ends around 4 p.m. Um, then I could... Because I, if we screw up the playlist, then who cares, right? But this is why I say you have to, to submit your videos early. You have to. You can't submit them, like, last minute. Um, but I would, you know... I will look for that later. I can't... If I play it now, then we're going to... The playlist will be messed up. All right? But I would do it later. We'll look at it for it later. Okay, fair enough. Please remind me later. All right. So, StarCraft is a ripoff of 40K, not the other way around. I'm not necessarily saying who's who. I'm just saying... Isn't it weird that they're all, like, similar? There's always some humans in space with big tanky armor. They're always fighting some bug-like aliens, right? Like, they're all the same. That's kind of weird to me. So, but I did. People are saying I did play this game, uh, a, you know, in 2011. I, I think I remember it. I think I remember playing it. The first one, that is. <clears throat> Fast forward. Is this all cutscene? It's all cutscene. Is there gameplay here? I want to see some gameplay. Oh, there's not. It's all cutscene. It's literally all cutscene. All right. It seems all right. It seems like a passable third-person action game. And obviously, if you're into Warhammer, you're probably going to love it. I don't know if there's anything that's really going to make it stand out or feel special. It certainly didn't look like that to me. But, okay. Hey, a recipe from Eddie Guerrero. Sad. A great dish.
Well, he passed away a long time XFL ago now. Football. Watching XFL? What? This again. We have another Cave Faves Kitchen. What is? What would Eddie Guerrero this make? This week in our journey through the WWF cookbook, we're going down to El Paso to make Eddie Guerrero's Mexican tortilla casserole, a dish full of Latino heat. I'm sorry. For this Incredibly one, racist. Two cans of Mexican Incredibly racist. Tomatoes, some cilantro, five six-inch corn tortillas, Monterey and pepper jack cheeses shredded and mixed, sour cream, and olives. All right. Let's fast forward. Microwave. Are you melting stuff? Tortilla, yeah, look at that. Cheese. Basically, he's doing layer after layer of ingredients and tortillas. For until the cheese melts and the sauce bubbles. Once you take it out, sprinkle the casserole with the other half of the cilantro, some sour cream, and sliced olives. Cut the casserole into wedges and serve. The dish is a little plain, I hate to admit. I was afraid that going into this, uh, looking at the ingredients and the recipe, I didn't really see much there that was going to add a whole lot of like zest or kick. Yeah, to it was just dish. plain tomatoes. Uh, you know, the pepper jack is there, you can taste it. But it's only a cup and a half of cheese, of pepper jack cheese, spread out among four servings. So there's not a whole lot of uh, kick there. Yeah. If you want to add a little more spice, I recommend adding jalapenos. Yeah, you got to add some. So my spice. wife makes a Mexican bake, or I guess you could call it a Mexican casserole. So here's how she does it, okay? She takes, we don't do little tortillas like that. We do big ass, like burrito sized tortillas. And what we do is we layer them, okay? And you have different layers. So the first layer would be like spicy refried beans. And then there's another layer, and that one's like uh, Spanish flavored rice. And then there's another layer, and that one would be like uh, seasoned ground turkey that she already pre cooked and added into the, the bait. And then you have like another layer, and that's like salsa or, or picante sauce. And then on top, another tortilla. And then you put the cheese, and you put like some enchilada sauce, and you, she adds uh, olives. Sometimes jalapenos, some different things, and the thing is, we make a we make it big, and that way it's in a giant. It's not like he put it in one round thing. We put it in a giant. Uh, what do you call it? The glass. There's a word for that. The glass baking uh, pans. I can't remember what they're called right now. I'm having a, a Pyrex. Pyrex. It's a big Pyrex baker. So the thing is, um, when you make it like that, number one, you're getting all these different ingredients that all taste good and they go together. You get the spiciness of the beans. You get a little kick from the the, the, the picante sauce, you get a little bit of flavor out of the rice. They're all combined. It tastes really, really good. And basically, you can it, it's huge. You get a lot out of it. That looked terrible because, number one, it looks like it's only enough for maybe like one or two servings. You're doing all that work just for like one meal maybe. And on top of that, like he said, it was so basic. It was just plain tomato chunks. Not even salsa. They didn't even say like go buy salsa. They're like plain tomato chunks, right? Cheese. And a little bit of, there was like nothing to it. There was no substance to it. So honestly, that's a pretty bad recipe in my opinion. Sad. Sad that that's the one Eddie Guerrero gets. He gets the bland recipe. Of a wrestler that was totally not bland, that's the recipe he gets, right? All right. We got time for probably like one more uh, before we maybe go on a break or uh, split up the part here. Let's see. What? This guy again. He did the uh, Wait, Elden Ring video, right? How like this? Now, how, what are they supposed to do about this? I don't know. All right, well, I'm heading home. What are you working on, by the way? Oh, hey, I was just reviewing this DLC character, Silver Soldier, and man, he's looking kind of strong. I'm not gonna lie. He is DLC, so you know you gotta make him a little crazy. Yeah, but this might be a little too crazy. I'm actually thinking about making some adjustments to him. So. <laughs> Did you say adjustments? <laughs> I like the smile. Why don't you come over here so I can tell you about it? I mean, you're the director, so I gotta go over these adjustments. You're the director. You anyway. Uh huh. That's the game director, I guess. Was oh, so he supposed to be a programmer? All right. So, what do you think needs to be adjusted on this perfectly designed character? All right. So this silver soldier character. I mean, he has like everything in the game. He has a counter. Really? He has a projectile. Yes. Interesting. Good frame data. He's good up close, far away. It's it's kind of wild, but. Just starting with one move, um, he has this gun attack. Damn! This move is ridiculous because he can just spam it the entire time. It goes across the entire stage, <laughs> and it does a lot of damage. Yeah. Oh, you mean like uh, Deathstroke or uh, Deadshot in Injustice 1 and 2? does seem pretty strong. 
I guess these kids are going to have to learn the matchup, am I right? <laughs> I think that would be possible if there was some type of counterplay because you can't even duck under this. You know, if they duck, they just get shot. Just look, look. <laughs> mm, that does seem pretty unbeatable, but you know what they say, get good. <laughs> I don't know who coded this hitbox. It, it certainly wasn't me, but it hits, you know, low, it hits uh -huh. middle, it hits high. <laughs> um, I'm just going to nerf him. Okay, because I don't know why we're beating around the bush. This character is way too strong. He's broken, he's overpowered, and we have to put the game out by like midnight. So, no, we got to make these adjustments now, and then we can think about everything later. So, I'm just gonna maybe take down, tone this. If you so much as even touch the frame data on his taunt, I will make sure the only thing you ever develop again in your miserable fucking life. It's Fortnite then. <laughs> the league will have to worry about the startup frames on the grid. Nod your head if you understand. What I I'm understand. Saying. I understand. Good. This character right here is perfect. He's perfect. What is the Sir, name of the video when fighting I game developers make overpowered make characters? A balanced game where as many people as possible could have fun. <laughs> Balance? <laughs> okay, Avatar, listen. When you make the game that you want to make, people start to think that they're really good. And they start to think that they're a god or something like that. I'm the only god around here. <laughs> I don't understand. What are people supposed to do when they play this game? Suffer. <laughs> they're supposed to suffer. Suffer. Don't they're supposed to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever disrespect me by trying to touch my beautiful and perfect character ever again, I will nerf your entire family. <laughs> do with that threat as you will. <laughs> now you have a good night. Oh yeah, and one more thing. You know that guy with the little T-Rex arms that has no range and is the worst character in the game? Yes. Nerf him. Nerf him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guess nobody's having fun. <laughs> I I see. I like that. That's a thumbs up from me from a fighting game perspective. Man, many people probably wouldn't like that clip if they, you know, if they're not into fighting games. <clears throat> That's definitely happened. I actually remember, uh, what was it? Mortal Kombat. Is it nine? Their first DLC, like every DLC character was like broken. Like every DLC character was just so good, and everyone was complaining. I remember when Freddy Krueger was added to Mortal Kombat, everyone was like, dude, he's like super broken. And I think they banned him from tournaments right away, like right away, because they said that he was so unfair and not balanced along with anybody else. Um, so I kind of understand. This is only from five months ago, which is kind of funny. I wonder if any recent fighting games, people have said, the only fighting game I'm aware of that people really, really hate a character, in Tekken 7, they hate Akuma, because they think Akuma is hands down brokenly good. He wins tons of tournaments, and everyone says that he basically he ruins the game. Like, it doesn't even feel like Tekken anymore because it's all Akuma, and Akuma's a guest character. So why the hell was he, he even that good? Like, you're going to have a guest character, fine, but you have him, like, a mid-tier. Why make him, like, top-tier best character in the game, right? So, so there you go. Anyway, all right. Well, thanks again. That was part two, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks again if you are watching DSP versus the Internet Live. You've been a great audience so far. I say that was thumbs up for me. A lot of people are like, nah. I think that was a thumbs up for me. I like that one. Uh, remember, if you're liking this content, the best way to support the channel right now is to become a member. Reason being, most of these videos are going to end up getting claimed on YouTube because these are not, you know, you're reacting to someone else's content. So there's no ad revenue to be had. But if you become a member, you can be the person to suggest videos for next week's show. So please consider it. Thank you in advance to anyone who becomes a member. And I really appreciate your support. Uh, on to the next part. Excellent.